So children of God, that message is a great message for all of us and an incredibly dangerous message for all of us. Those two together. And the reason why it's great is because we know that there is no... Jesus said, I'm never going to leave you. I'm never going to forget you. I will always be there. The Father will not forsake us. And the Holy Spirit will not leave us. We know God, our God, exists, reigns, and will be with us forever. The dangerous side about this is, is frankly, well, what the disciples experienced. In our gospel lesson, after seeing Jesus resurrected from the dead, after seeing his power and might, after watching the wind and the waves, listen to his command, be still. Our gospel lesson for this day, then the 11 disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain that Jesus had told them to go. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. You see, some folks see God as a rescuer, as, as, as like a big us, that like there's us and God, too. And, and, that, and that what we depend on is that God's going to be there in the end. And he's going to rescue me from the way I've lived my life, the things I've done in my life. He's going to forgive me, and he's going to be in the end. And then, if, if I am good, maybe some of his power will come into my life. And when I'm in trouble, what I need is a big daddy who's going to come and rescue me. You, you know those phone calls, those of you who are fathers, you hear all the time, Dad, when you're talking normally, but when that phone call comes and it starts off, Daddy, you know there's something wrong with the car, right? And they need rescuing. You know there's something wrong with their life and they need rescuing. You know there's a problem. And what they're calling for is a power greater than them. Of course dads are there. We pray. We pray we're good enough to be there. We know forever our Father in heaven is there. But friends, that's not the full extent of who he is. Now, I, I won't pretend to explain the three. But just I want to encourage you and help you to understand, we followers of Jesus need to think about the threes. The, the, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is, is a part of this understanding of the threes. That, that there are three in one, and one in three is how he describes himself, not how we have made him. And when he describes himself in that way, we got to figure out how do we deal with this. Now, now sometimes... We deal with it very poorly. You know, that's, that's the same way that the, the disciples looked at Jesus, and basically they saw him not as God. Many of them, some of them saw him until the power of the Holy Spirit came on them. Some of them saw him as just a very powerful man whose life was aligned with the Father's, and therefore the Father gave him power. They weren't thinking about him as Savior. They weren't thinking about him as Lord. They weren't thinking about him as sitting on the right hand of the Father. They weren't thinking about him, as John described, as being the one through whom the whole world was created. You know, that's what the Bible says. We, we, we describe it that, that God created the heavens and the earth. And we think about that as the work of the Father. But in the Gospel of John, it says that the word of God, the spoken word of God, hmm, the word of God, Jesus, that's the living word of God. 
The Word of God created everything. That the Father gave the command, and Jesus, His Son, followed that command, followed the Father's will, and through Him, everything was created, and through Him, everything later would be recreated when the world fell into sin, that he would be the one through whom the world was recreated as he gave his life for us on the cross. Friends, we have to stop thinking about God as being a big us and a more powerful us and begin to think about him the way he describes himself. Now, it's hard for us to understand because I, I've heard this so many times when I've talked with, with people who are not believers. They'll, they'll say, well, okay, if you're God, you say he's loving? Hmm. You say he's powerful? Hmm. You say he's merciful and just? Hmm. Then why didn't he stop the Nazis? Right? How come he didn't stop the Holocaust? If he's so loving and kind and perfect and just, and powerful. Friends, it's the same kind of question that was posed many years ago, and I use this as, a, as, as an example. The confirmation kid who came to Martin Luther and, and said, if God is so great and powerful, is he powerful enough to create a rock that is so big he can't pick it up? And Luther's response was, there's a special place in hell for confirmation kids who ask those kinds of questions. <laughs> Basically, it's, it's, it's trying to make God into us and have God submit to our understanding and our knowledge and our experience. It's like we as, as Lutheran Christians, we have a tough time with the three. Now, the two we usually talk about are are us and a big God. There's another two we talk about as God the Father and God the Son. But quite often, the way we speak it in reality is, is I believe in God the Father, God the Son, and God the other one because we don't really want to talk about the Holy Spirit. We don't want to deal with any of that stuff. I mean, that's what Pentecostals do, right? Not Lutherans. Friends, we have a God who exists, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And we live and move and breathe by his power. As, as Kim read in Genesis, that, that at the time that God spoke the word and created the world, it says the spirit of the Lord was brooding, was the ruach was brooding upon the waters. And then when God created Adam, the dirt man, he created him out of the earth. The spirit blew life into him. And Adam became alive, created by the word, the command of God, It is that same spirit who takes the dead flesh of me, the dirt that I am, and oh, through his word and sacraments makes me his own. It is the power of God. Nothing that I'm doing makes it happen. But it's the power of God in all of our lives. We would be dead still in our trespasses had the Father not acted in love the Son not given his life, and the Spirit given his faith. And so we are not twos, but we're threes. There's other threes that we deal with when we're thinking about God and his power in our lives, who God is for us, because well, like, like this, this Friday night, Friday night at 7 p.m. And for those of you who are watching on cable, it's Friday night, June 20th. So by the time you see this on cable, it's not the Friday night afterwards. But Friday night, uh, the, the 20th, right? Okay. We're going to have a healing service here. 
a service of healing and prayer. And, and some people have said, well, Lutherans don't do that kind of stuff. I said, well, we do if we want to be fully in the Trinity. If we want to believe in God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we're going to pray for healing for everyone. You know, and sometimes, sometimes God will miraculously heal. I've been a participant several times in miraculous healings. The, the pastor who's going to be here, Pastor Teske, is one who has been miraculously healed. He had a cerebral hemorrhage. He was giving a speech, had cerebral hemorrhage, and, and was in the hospital. And when he was done with this hemorrhage, he had lost all feeling on one side of his body. And the doctor said, you will never walk again. You will never speak like this. You just, all one side was gone. And, and three weeks later, he went and a pastor was praying for him. And God miraculously healed him. And he's been using Pastor Teske and others of us to bring about miraculous healings for people. Sometimes God does that. And we dare not say, oh, it was just, you know, kind of like, it was inside of me all the time. It just had to come out. All I needed to do was have somebody, somebody give me confidence and I would be healed. No, that's not what happens. We believe that God, by the power of the Holy Spirit, God, by his power, he heals. He heals diseases. He heals lives. He heals addictions. He heals our past. He heals our sins. He heals our judgmental spirits. He heals, heals our marriages. He heals. And we're going to be praying for all those healings. Sometimes he does it miraculously. Sometimes, sometimes he, he does it in another way. Like St. Paul. St. Paul, when he had the thorn in his flesh, it said, he prayed three times. Now, when St. Paul's praying, it, it's like, it's fasting and prayer. This is big time. And you'd think, you'd think if anybody was going to be healed by God, it would be St. Paul. I mean, he's one of his favorite guys. But the healing that he received were these words. My grace is sufficient for you. I'll give you the power to deal with it. And that, friends, sometimes is the strength that God provides for us to deal with our infirmities, for us to deal with our problems, for us to deal with the pain, for us to deal with our disappointments, for us to deal with all these things. Sometimes he heals miraculously. Sometimes, sometimes he says, I'm going to give you the strength to deal with it. And sometimes he says, mm, not yet, not right now. Kind of like when, when I was 12, I was absolutely sure I was ready to drive. <laughs> Praise God, my father did not give me the car keys. He remembered back to when I was five, and my cousin Ricky and I gave it a, a try. I worked the pedals. Ricky worked the, the steering wheel on Grandpa's car. Didn't work out too well. I wasn't ready. Sometimes he says, wait, just like the hundreds of years that the children of God, his people Israel, were in slavery in Egypt, were in bondage in Babylon. Just like the years that, that Joseph was in prison before God raised him up to be number two in Egypt, just like the children of God wandered 40 years in the desert, just like he doesn't act sometimes in my life when I want him to do so. But the one thing I know through all of this, no matter whether he provides miraculous healing or grace to deal with it or will do something later, 
I know his love. And I know what it is to have a father's love. And I guess the, the, the thing that, that for you fellas, we get something that's different from a mother's love. Because a mother's connection, I mean, this, this is a, a life within a mother's body. She feels it kicking and turning. She goes through the, 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 the travails of, of birth. And that baby is put into her arms. And she loves it coming out of her. We love it no matter what. Just because. Whatever comes out of the womb, we love it. And we've had kind of vicarious experience, like we were there at the start, you know. But the rest of it, we're just kind of hanging around. But we would kill for that child, to protect that child. We would sacrifice to protect that child. That little one is our own as if it came out of our bodies. And that's the glimpse that God the Father puts in all of our hearts so we get an idea. If we're passionate about that, think about how passionate he is about you. And while it says in the, the book of Isaiah, can a mother, and this is the same thing, can a father, can a mother forget a baby nursing at her breast? Though she may forget you, I will never forget you. Because it, it is possible. Parents do fail and they forget their kids and they abandon them and all kinds of terrible things happen in life because of our sin. Though she may forget you, though, God says, I will never forget you. See, I have you graven on the palms of my hands. And that's a beautiful place for us to be. Under the power of God. Not with him being a big us. But him being God and we being his children, his people. Understanding God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit and praying in the Holy Spirit for the grace to live in faith in Him, for the strength to live in faith in Him, and knowing that, that, that as God has promised, what He says, is He puts salvation, the great pearl of salvation, into our dead hands, and then He closes our hand around and holds us tight. That's the work of the Holy Spirit in us. We believe, teach, and confess that that's true, that we are dead in our sins, and the only way that we can live is through faith in the Holy Spirit. Now let us live in that faith. With the faith that's been placed inside of us. The word and sacrament inside of us. Let's live in that faith. And trust that God will really do all the things he's promised to do. And not limit him for what we think he ought to do. Let's pray. Oh Lord God. Sometimes I get confused. Sometimes I think you are just a big, powerful me. Heal me of that. Change my mind. By your word, reveal to me who you are, not who I want to make you. And then, O oh Lord, Move in power in my own life and let me weave my life with you. Let me find my life with you. Let me live my life with you for now and forever. See, in the book of Ecclesiastes, it says two are better than one. And it says, it's, and that's good, that two can protect each other, two can keep each other's warm, two can, somebody else can lift you up when you fall down. But it says, a cord of three strands is not easily broken. And as a papa who has spent a lot of his life braiding long hair, I can tell you, a cord of three strands is not easily broken. 
as you're able to weave, weave your life around the, the Word of God and let the Word of God dwell in you richly. As Jesus himself is woven into your family so, so that it's not just, well, I believe in you. It's let him be the power of your life, the thing that holds you together. Your work life, your family life, your, your home life, your forgiveness life, your sin and grace life. A quarter of three strands is not easily broken. Followers of Jesus think in threes. So let's receive the blessing from that God of the threes. Please rise. If you want to, you can stick your hands out and receive that blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. Now, if you want to pass that blessing on to somebody else, pour it on them and pass it to somebody else the rest of this week. The Lord bless you and keep you.